Now the Act says you can only use it for this purpose. Yep, true. But we've also had other instances where information was collected for a specific purpose, we were told it wasn't going to be used for anything else, and lo and behold, several years, 10 years, a dozen years down the road, it is in fact linked to other databases and eventually used for other purposes. That's exactly what happens. So although we're told that today, we have no guarantee that in the future it won't be used for other purposes. That's a bigger problem, I think. Again, it, this act did a good thing and then it went too far and allowed too many other things to happen along with this. And everyone, people say to me, well, what, for heaven's sake, if you've done nothing wrong, what's your problem? What are you worried about? Well, part of the issue that we found with collection of personal information and databases is that uh, sometimes the information is wrong <laughs> and it's unverified or unverifiable. Um, and so people are walking around looking at your information, using it for various purposes, and in fact, it's wrong, or it's misinterpreted. Um, a, a doctor codes an extra long visit with a patient um, as a diagnostic code for um, counseling on alcoholism, because, well, you know, that just gives them the half hour billing and, and that's close enough. Um, but in fact, that turns up in someone's employment record later when uh, they're checked by an insurance company and the person's denied a job. Again, these are real cases. A person's denied a job because it turns up in their health record that they've been counseled for alcoholism. Well, they weren't. They just had an extra long session with a doctor who decided to code it as a counseling session, you know, tick for alcoholism because it was a longer session and they wanted to be paid for it. But there it is. The information's in there. It, it wasn't correct and it was misinterpreted further than that and it had a huge effect down the line on somebody's life. So that's my concern when we start uh, giving powers of collection of information uh, to a group. This government has been very generous in giving um, overrides ex and exemptions uh, around collection of personal collection use and disclosure of personal information to police services. There's a lot of exceptions that they already have in the health information bill, in the in the privacy and information uh, protection bill, and under FOIP. A lot of extra power, more than any other organization. The police services have those exemptions. So. Uh, I think we need to be very, very cautious when we start handing over additional access to a very wide uh, range of information. And let's go back to that argument about, well, you know, if you're leading a good life and you're a good person, then what have you got to worry about? Well, we already know that things can be misinterpreted in a file. Let me give another example with all those Google Maps of uh, their taking of people. And you, here's one. This happened to me. So you all know in this house of my struggles with smoking and how I had to, it took me so long to quit and how hard it was. And in the Google map of my home, there is a woman sitting on the front steps of the Google picture of my home smoking a cigarette. So I'm trying to tell my insurance company that I quit smoking. And there, sitting on the front steps, is a woman smoking a cigarette. Well, the woman's not me. But it's damn hard for me to convince the insurance company that it's not me because she's sitting on the front steps of my house. And she's turning up in a Google Street View clearly smoking a cigarette sitting on the front steps of my house. What the heck am I supposed to do with that? Now I'm in an argument about whether or not I'm entitled to this health care because I'm a smoker, I'm not a non-smoker as I claimed. This is a true story, guys. Uh, so I had to go through a number of things to prove that I wasn't blonde and I didn't weigh that much and here's a picture of me and I don't know who that person was. It turned out to be someone who was visiting uh, an individual who was boarding with me at the time. But that's what happens to that information. It wasn't me. But she was smoking, sitting on the front steps of my house. Therefore, I was in trouble with the insurance company that, w that I had applied to to get a better rate because I went through all that hell and agony to quit smoking. So you start to get a picture here that this is not a perfect system, right? And as people collect more, and I did nothing wrong there. I did everything right. I quit smoking. But I got caught in something that I couldn't verify. I had no control over. And there was information that they were using against me. So you, do you get a sense now, and I've given you guys very specific examples, all of which can be verified really easily. 
Um, so that's why you have to be careful about, one, how wide a net you allow people to collect in information. And this bill collects a lot of information. Closed circuit television, bank records, employment records, health records, GPS tracking, cell phone, uh, where you've searched, what archives you've searched uh, in your web browser, what web pages did you go to. Uh, so, boy, you better be careful that when you were searching on your web browser, you didn't type in P-O-R-N, oh, now you're in trouble, Mr. Minister of Infrastructure, because when they go looking for you because you haven't reported in, you've been on a porn site. Well, that wasn't what you were typing in. You know, the little numbers are, that exactly right, and the little, little, um, tiles that you're supposed to hit are so small for your fingers now, how many times do I make a mistake punching that stuff in? But that's the kind of mistake that happens. It turns up when they go looking for it and they say, ho, ho, the Minister of Infrastructure was, was surfing a porn site. And it's not. He was looking for something that was about oranges. And he, the O and the P are beside each other and now he's in trouble. A what? A Bruin site. There you go. Um, but I hope I've helped you understand why I think this bill is important and why I think we need to be so careful about doing this because it gets away from us literally with the click of a button. And once these are housed in electronic databases, linking them to other electronic databases again is done in a milli microsecond and can be sent around the world faster than you can even think of doing it. And that's why it's our responsibility in this House to be very, very cautious when we develop bills that empower any agency, including ourselves, to collect information on our public. We need to protect them. We don't need to be exposing them to wider opportunities where someone else can be literally surfing through their life without that person being aware of it and without them having been able to give permission for it. So I just want to make sure that what's a good idea in this bill doesn't turn out for us years later to be a bad idea. Because how many times do we hear about good stories about health records and then how many stories do we hear about health records flying around in the wind uh, outside of the back of somebody's garage? Uh, we find about uh, unencrypted laptops that have been picked up in your parked car and taken off somewhere. That's what we usually hear about health records. We don't hear about the good stories. We hear about how somebody's information, personal private information, is now out there, God knows where, being used for we don't know what, but it's not good. So thanks very much for allowing me to put that on the record. You've all been very patient in listening to me. I wish I wasn't an expert on privacy, but unfortunately, you all insisted on putting me on the committees in which I learned all of this. So you only have yourselves to blame. Thank you very much.